Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Sean here at Blue Ridge Silverhound. Guess what? This might be uh, the last pocket change market report for a little while here, as we are going to be heading east to Colorado Springs for the a and Money Show. Uh, so we're going to probably be about a week, week and a half without a pocket change market report. Um, as we take a look and see how the show circuit's uh, going, you know, this is going to be our first big show of the year and uh, should be a lot of fun. If you guys are in town to check things out at the ANA, I personally invite you guys to come on by and, uh, you know, personally meet up a little bit of a meet and greet, I guess, um, and just have fun. That's why we're uh, all here. Is to uh, enjoy uh, numismatics, the hobby, cherry picking, and the like. Um, and that brings us to our PCMR for the week. All right. Yeah, it's uh, kind of weird timing. We're uh, dropping this on a Monday out of all times. And I did put March 10th because I collected data up to that point. And, um, you know, these are finds that you could look for in pocket change, coin roll hunting, um, cherry picking, you know, eBay, <laughs> everybody cherry picks eBay, myself included. I've got some killer deals, um, cherry picking some coins that were not attributed as an error or a specific variety. Um, so I was able to do good there. Uh, but also coin shops and the big shows or little shows cherry pick till your heart's content, add something really nice to your collection or resell for a massive profit. Uh, you know, there's a couple different things that you could do to really help your cause here. Um, I, I know myself included, I kind of depend on doing what I do with cherry picking as, um, kind of another way to supplement my income. All right. Um, so, you know, there's plenty to go around if you elected, you wanted to try that for yourself. So a few little ground rules, the coins that we're going to look at are from the last, I would say, 48 hours worth. Uh, it doesn't take too much um, to put together one of these reports as far as sold activity. We don't talk about graded coins, keep the money in your pocket. Oftentimes the coins will sell for themselves, even without a graded holder. There's no guarantee that it'll add a lot more value. And then third... We are going to be using the original photos from the respective listings from each one of these eBayers, uh, these sellers. So you're going to get the best and the worst uh, collection of photos. And, uh, you know, you're going to know exactly where that bar is set. The good news is, seeing as how coin photography is a little bit challenging, that bar is really not set very high. So... Um, polish off your smartphone, clean those lenses, and get ready to uh, to to do this. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. See what we have here. All right, so we're going to start things off here with a 1988A $10 bill. Uh, one of my favorite errors, although this one is quite minor compared to some of the others I've seen. Uh, this features a very small back-to-front wet ink transfer, as you can see there on the left side of the front of the note. You can see some of the design transfer from the reverse, which was on the impression cylinder that transferred to the front of the note at some point. Um, this one right here is a very small partial type. Uh, traditionally, these are worth a lot more the more coverage you have across the note. And keep in mind, with wet ink transfers, the design will be mirrored. It'll be in reverse. So you got to make sure that that is exactly what's happening. If it doesn't have that, more than likely it's going to be a fake. Uh, so this note right here, look at the back, pretty well uh, circulated piece. $44.69 was the sold price on this. And uh, we've seen wedding transfers all the way up into the newer notes. So, you know, they are out there for the taking. And, um, you know, it's just going to be a matter of looking at, at all your paper money, look at both sides just to make sure. It's going to be a quick little uh, uh, look. If you could uh, add that to your hunting. All right. So uh, we did have a few lots here this week. Uh, here's the first one here. It's actually quite nice. This is a lot of five Lincoln Memorial cents. Uh, for the most part, they're all off center struck. Except for the 64 Lincoln that has the nice sized curved clip on there. Now, um, the hallmark of any valuable off center struck out of collar uh, error is going to be the presence of an actual full readable date. Unfortunately, on the four off-center struck coins, 
you don't really see a full date except that top middle one there you know it's it looks like it's from the 1980s but we don't really know what what date it is um these are uh, collected by date um oftentimes um you know you're going to command a lot more money selling coins with a full date for an off center strike um you know and the reason why that i even bring up lots um in these videos is it presents an opportunity to buy them at a bulk discount so that way you can turn around and flip them individually and um, the idea is we're trying to double our money here now for the five coins here it sold for forty nine dollars and eleven cents with 16 bids um, bringing it to just under ten dollars for a cost basis um, you, you might be able to flip these for double that at about $20 um, buy it now um, you know that possibility is there you'll come pretty close to doubling up your money you're probably more like 1.65 uh, times your initial investment which is not too bad but keep in mind these coins they might be sitting around on ebay for a little while uh so this is kind of like the low and slow game here when it comes to uh flipping these as long as you're doing a buy it now type of uh, affair um expect the coins that you know they could sit there for a week or two or longer you just never know uh, the next one that we have here is uh, one that's quite minor but comes up quite a bit in much older Lincoln sets. This is a 1931 Lincoln wheat set featuring a, what we call a lamination peel on the obverse there. That's that, it looks like a crack that's kind of swathed right off of the coin. Um, there's just impurities in the metal um, and then with a little bit of that heat applied to, um, to properly anneal the planchets. Um, you know that that'll kind of like wake things up on the laminations on these coins so this particular one sold for $22 uh, much tougher date to find something like this and again it's the rules still apply here this is a, a very affordable type of error collecting niche um, and because of that people are out there actively uh, looking for specific dates maybe they're putting together date sets and they'll pay a little bit more to have something that not everybody else does. Uh, here's a 1983, a full readable date Lincoln Memorial Cent, off center by about 25%, very attractive coin. It is a copper coated zinc composition. All right, so it's a much newer coin. Uh, traditionally, you know, not a lot of people like these, uh, considering that when you have that exposed zinc, uh, there's always the possibility that the coin would begin decaying. Uh, which is highly possible you add a little bit of moisture to that exposed sink and then you know it's uh pretty like pretty much like melting sugar you know it doesn't take much for it to happen um but overall it's a pretty decent coin uh again you know if someone needs this uh for a date set you know there is that this one sold for 24 dollars and 49 cents with 16 total bids so there was some activity some desirability on this one uh, 1943 Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Okay, this looks like your prototypical pull right out of a silver melt bin type piece here. Um, sure, I mean, it could look and appear like a much nicer type coin, you know, probably an XF40. Um, it has a lot of design and detail, maybe a little hint of luster all throughout. But if you look right up at the two o'clock position on the obverse of the coin or the front of the coin, you're going to see um a cutout in the rim okay this is actually a very shallow sheet clip and um, it's nothing too crazy or too fancy but it is a clipped planchet um 1943p one of the more common dates this one right here sold for 29 dollars and 75 cents which is roughly three times what melt value is for this particular piece so it's always worth looking through all of your scrap silver if you're a 90 percent hoarder like i am um i always tend to look for things like this that are quite minor but can make a huge impact in bringing in more money so that way i could go out and buy more more things with that uh here's a 2004 lincoln memorial set now what's going on here this one doesn't look you know too crazy um but when I did come across this listing, I was more than surprised. I, I had totally forgotten that this one even existed. 
This is actually a, a very nice doubled die and a good one for not being a cherry pickers listed variety. And it's on the reverse of the coin. There you go. Now there's the uh, the doubled die version up top and then you have the normal reverse there at the bottom. Nice little comparison. I'm glad that the seller added this particular photo reference in here to help show everyone exactly what they're bidding on. This one is referred to as the DDR number one. Uh, I believe it's a Wexler and uh, Dr. Wiles listed variety. So if you go on their website, varietyvista.com or doubleddie.com, more than likely you're going to see this. It's, it's too nice to uh, ignore. Um, but you can see the general overall thickening of all the letters um, horizontally, you know, that it's just pretty crazy. Even the little dots right there um, next to Unum and the E and P and E Pluribus. I mean, that thing is more oval like and it's stretched. It's it's very, very clear what's going on here. Uh, there are a couple die markers per the seller. Good job, by the way, uh, by showing these uh, what look to be like little die scratches um that that are um uh something to look out for when you know you have the ddr number one um that's why they call them die markers and they're, they're kind of like fingerprints for this particular variety that really solidify what we have here uh so this one sold for ten dollars and 62 cents with three bids um now varieties that come from Wexler and Wiles, okay, they're not going to be as valuable as say some of the ones that come from the Cherry Pickers Guide or the Red Book, uh, which are the big well-known varieties. Those are the FS listed type of varieties and those obviously should always be looked for. Uh, the next one that we have here, this one, I'm telling you, this one might be the steal of the year so far. This is a 1992D Lincoln Memorial Sun, okay? Nothing too crazy as far as condition. I would say probably an AU50 if I had to venture a guess here. Very well circulated. Uh, but this one, folks, is this the close AM reverse? Check that out. Yeah, and it's the same coin too. Check out the uh, little carbon spot on the top right corner of the memorial building you can see it on the same spot here too but check out the a and m in america they're touching at the base this is the uh, the big variety for this particular date as the mint inadvertently used proof reverse dies on the business strike coins which show a clear kind of difference in the overall design with the a and m touching in america um, you know, and it even has the correct FG, the Frank Gasparro initials as well, um, at the base of the memorial. I mean, this one right here, folks, sold for $70, $70. This is, in this grade, probably a six to $800 coin as it sits, um, if it turns out to be a legit um close am okay one, one you know i mean you know based off of the little carbon spot is telling me that it is and uh you know they just sold it for too cheap i think they were probably scared about how the condition of the coin would greatly affect the value of even big varieties like this and i'm telling you it doesn't make nearly as big of an impact as say um on some of the other varieties that have a lot less value this is truly a rarity that got plucked from ebay for dirt cheap uh the next one that we have here 1893 s over s repunchment mark barber dime we don't ever talk about these okay but it's worth talking about because nobody else is so the coin in itself is just simply a good condition coin yeah it doesn't have a whole lot of detail um, you know, the area where you would normally see Liberty on, uh, Liberty's little crown thing is not there. It's completely worn flat. Uh, so there you go. So the secondary, Den uh, San Francisco mint mark, sorry, is punched East. And this is a clearly defined repunch mint mark so much so that it is a cherry picker's guide. This is FS501. And this one ended up selling for $37, you know, so that's a pretty good sale on a coin that otherwise, you know, you could pick up for probably about five to eight dollars. Um, it's not that big of a key date. And if you're able to find one with this repunch mint mark, that's going to be a fantastic, fantastic find. 
Um, yeah, what's up with Roosevelt Dimes? Again, it's beginning to kind of shock me every time I, uh, I, I find a very impactful type sale. This is yet again another big one. It doesn't look like it, but it is. 1974 uh, Rosie. It's off center by about 25%. Very nice, high grade, brilliant uncirculated piece. This one here sold for $72.48. And I'm telling you, if it was any other coin, a Lincoln cent, a nickel of the same type, same off-center, out-of-collar spread, it wouldn't even sell for half that. So, yeah, all of a sudden, Roosevelt Dimes is getting its due right now. I'm thinking there's probably maybe two or three new error collectors in Roosevelt Dimes that have emerged just in the last, I would say, six months. Um, and they just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, we also have this 1969D Lincoln Memorial. Okay, this is what they call the peekaboo off-center strike um, because it shows the face of whatever figure is on that obverse. In this case, Abraham Lincoln's face, you know, is showing right on the off-center strike. What's cool is you have a full readable date, mid-mark, that's always a plus. This one's off-center by about 55, 60%, give or take. And this one sold for $49.99. A so very nice, um, lightly circulated, full brown example. And uh, I'm telling you, you just never know what you're going to come across. There are some coins, guys, that just, it, it leaves you wondering. Like, this thing had circulated for the better part of the last like six seven years okay it's a seven year old quarter george rogers clark i remember when this thing first came out it was just like it's a cool design but you know it was just like any other state park quarter you know it was just like yeah this is another one to add to the album um and then you know we've really uh been blessed with a lot of mint errors here lately from the u.s mint and um this one uh, kind of falls, you know, earlier compared to what we've seen a lot of other things um, being found um, out in circulation. This one, just a massive strike through on the obverse. That's what it is. It's just like grease and debris, dirt, and uh, who knows what else was on the obverse die before this coin was struck. Uh, this one right here, $37.55 with 23 bids. And the coin is very well circulated. This is not a jemmy by any stretch, but still carried quite a bit of value into this sale. 1960D. Again, this is a this is a date in mint mark we should all be looking at. The large date, of course, is a boon for various repunch mint marks. This is such an awesome date to look through. Um, and this is yet again, you know, the biggest one. This is RPM number one. The coin is in great shape as well. And there you go. A very nice, clearly defined D over D repunch mint mark on there. Now, keep in mind, prior to 1990, um, mint employees were still hand punching the mint marks in the working dies. So there was a lot of room for error. And oftentimes, you know, those errors, they really didn't matter to the employees. They'd rather just, you know, reset the, uh, the, uh, the long steel punch, tap it in again, and then go ahead and use the die, you know. Um, yeah, so that way didn't, they didn't have to, you know, put another working die into service. You know, they'll just continue to use the one. And uh, repunch mint marks are common across very many dates, um, going all the way up to 1989. And people love them. I know I do. I, I try and cherry pick a lot of these. So this one sold for $16.95. This is like, you know, shooting fish in a barrel type money. It's very easy to cash in here. Uh, tough one, 2002D Ohio State Quarter. Uh, this one is broad struck, a slight broad strike here. Again, these are uh, collected by state people. There are a few people that are putting together or trying to um, find an off center or broad strike of each state, preferably each mint mark. Okay, and uh, here's one that we don't see pop off too much here on the uh the market this one sold for 20 bucks okay it's quite minor too next piece of currency we got a 1995 ten dollar bill uh with a grossly uh, misaligned overprint as you can see there on the right side all of the green ink stuff is far south than you know where it's supposed to be um 
you know, it's, it's something that happens. You know, there's a little shift or, you know, what, whatever misaligned sheet prior to the overprint being applied. And you get things that look like this. Pretty crazy. This one here uh, sold for $70.89. And that's with 20 bids. Uh, there's a little bit of a image of the reverse showing that this one's probably around a VF25. You know, it's got regular circulation wear, uh, but overall still a nice collector grade. Uh, next one here, uh, more misaligned print shenanigans. This time it looks like the second print, which is the base print of the front, was misaligned. Okay, it's not, uh, not a miscut on this one and you'll see why here in a second but you can see the corresponding next note on the sheet there on the right side when we look at the reverse perfectly centered okay so perfectly centered back perfectly centered overprint on the front it's just that first initial base print on the front that was shifted so the the sheet was cattywampus um, during that particular part of the process $94.87 with 17 bits. Very good stuff. And uh, here's a newer, brand new 2017 A $20 bill. All right. Check out that little, uh, little thing there on the bottom left corner of this note. This is actually a butterfly fold. So there is a, um, the corner of the sheet had folded in, okay, on this one. And uh, it was cut while it was still folded in thereby creating the little tab you see there. Now, it has come to my attention and it made my skin crawl to know that there were, you know, bank tellers that when they do come across these, they just simply cut it with a pair of scissors or tear it. And I am in shock when I heard that. Um, if you do come across it, don't do any of that because, you know, this is a $20 bill and the greatest magic trick that you could ever perform on a $20 bill is to take something like this and turn it into $75.96 like this seller did with 22 total bids. It was a very, very active sale. Uh, here's our first, uh, this might be, no, actually I got two. I got two uh, very nice size cut die breaks. Here's the first one here on this 1984 Lincoln. Uh, you can see that it covers up the word in in the motto there. Um, piece of the die had cracked and fallen out. And that's how it creates these things right here. Uh, pretty cool, you know, uh, it's it's kind of small. and uh, But still, you know, cuds are kings right now in the market. The pricing is so consistent. This one, for example, still sold for $42.48. Um, some will look at this and say, wow, it's not even worth that. Uh, but, you know, for collectors that are into cut die breaks, which is a very large group, they pay this pretty regularly. Uh, 1988 Lincoln Memorial Set. Nothing too crazy. It's got a lot of, like, weird discoloration and staining and th things of that nature here. Um, but this is the newly attributed FS901. They call it the flared G in the initials there. So it's got that drop gusset where that flat part of the G is uh, that goes beyond the curl, bottom curl of the G. Um, so this was actually before called the wide AM. Okay, and they changed that. Uh, the attributors, PCGS and NGC now coined this one the flared g variety so in spite of its condition it's still sold for a little bit 16 dollars and 87 cents um much nicer graded coins uh preferably like mid state you know red browns and full red sell for 50 to 100 dollars pretty regularly and uh this one's really crazy so the argument here is that this one is what they call a um uh, a light pressure strike or a die adjustment strike, um, which is something, which is a term in the error community that is quite overused if not diagnosed pro properly. Um, which I think in this case, I think it is a die adjustment strike. Okay, and I'll explain here in a second why. Um, the our other argument is like, oh, that's a coin that was struck through a buttload of grease on both the obverse and reverse dies of the uh, mid presses. So um, with a die adjustment strike, you're not going to have fully struck rims. Okay, now this one does have a few little areas of good rims, but overall, 
a lot of the rims on both the front and back of the coin are pretty worn flat okay and they're flat because it didn't receive a full strike um so with that being said you know usually die adjustment strikes are kind of like trial strikes or they weren't supposed to release once they're struck once to test out the pressure of the presses for this particular thickness of coin they usually take the coin and they toss it out and destroy them this one ended up escaping the mint which is pretty easy to do this one sold for $53.19 and uh it could be a 2021 a 22 a 23 yeah you just never know and that's kind of the beauty with these things it makes you wonder but it is on a much newer coin and we just can't ignore that Here's our other big boy cud. This thing is a monster. It's a 1980 Lincoln Memorial sign. You can see that big cud there on the obverse. Uh, this is a stunner. I, I, I could look at this thing for a while. Uh, this one sold for $108.14, and that's with three bids. Again, that's par for the course for the value of these. Here's a 1974D uh, double struck Lincoln Memorial sign. This thing is pretty crazy too although i am kind of questioning what that that weird flat area is there on the reverse you know it looks like it probably could have been a clamshell lamination that's split uh it does appear to be like that or it could be postman damage you know there's a few unknowns here with this but you know it, it's um it's a pretty crazy looking double struck coin this one sold for four hundred five dollars and fifty five cents and i believe the seller pitched this one as being a double error both a double struck and then whatever that thing is there on the reverse uh this might be our last piece of currency 1974 actually we got one more after this um this one right here uh is another misalignment but also this is the, this is this particular note has uh what we call a rejection mark okay if you see that kind of like pink swath there at the bottom left part of the note that's actually a crayon that the bep employees when they're inspecting these notes if they find stuff like this they'll put a a uh, a wax crayon mark right and it's usually like a pink or red right on the note so that way when it goes to pack out this is pulled out and then a star note is put into its place now it's easy to see the misalignment here just the second print and the overprint are just not jiving up everything's all funky when we look at the reverse perfectly centered so it's obviously not a miscut issue this one sold for 169 dollars that's pretty cool that's a really good sale for this the rejection mark does add a premium to it because again it's something that should have been pulled out of the um uh, production pack outs but ended up you know still getting sent to the banks and uh 1942 denver this is a type one you can see the mid mark there to the right of the um monticello uh which indicates that this is a nickel composition coin this one just has a strike through you can see it there on uh jefferson's uh kind of like jacket area all right um so there was some grease on the uh the die and then it struck this one um but aside from that this is a tough date 42 d's without any mid airs that are brilliant uncirculated typically sell for this kind of money which was 42 dollars with six bids um they're they're in that 40 to 60 dollar range ungraded and this one has some pretty decent steps on it too here's our other lot for the day uh just a lot of six pretty cool off center or broad struck washington quarters you know you got and they're all different dates too 77 79 there's 80 philly 81 philly 83 philly and then 98 denver um i mean you know the six coins sold for 139 dollars and 50 cents with five bids um probably not a lot of room here to double your money i i think this one's uh pretty close to being completely stripped out of any possible profit margins um so again do your research know what these sell for um and then you know be intentional about what you're bidding okay and don't make it emotional if if someone beats your bid by five bucks and it's already a hundred thirty dollars pull back and just let them take it you know because if you're trying to resell these um you know you, you don't want to buy this resell them all and it takes six months and you only manage to make like 20 bucks 
all right? Um, that doesn't work out, and, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to do that to yourself. Um, here's our other piece of paper. This is a, a newer, non-colorized big head, 1996 $20 bill with a uh, back-to-front wedding transfer. Wow, that's pretty cool. You know, you got that, that great big green 20 on the bottom left-hand corner of the note, and it is backwards. It's not a full 20, but it's pretty cool. Um, this one had circulated quite a bit. All right, check out the centerfold there, as you can see. Uh, when we look at the reverse, uh, just lots of circulation wear. Uh, nothing too crazy. This one sold for $53.45 with seven bids. And then finally, uh, we're just going to bang it off with a banger here. The last coin of this PCMR for about a week. The good old 2009 Denver, Washington, D.C. FS801 double die reverse. Now keep in mind, this one does have a scratch on the obverse, so it is a details coin. But this just kind of tells us the importance of this coin as it is one of the big chasers in the state quarter slash territorial quarter series. Um, if you need a refresher, there you go. Check out ELL and Ellington right there on the piano keys. And you've, the first three letters are wildly doubled southwards there. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is a crazy coin. This is a bucket list coin, but I wasn't going to buy, you know, this one sold for $380 at 55 cents, even with the big scratch on the front and all the circulation wear. This coin is on my bucket list, but if I'm going to be spending, you know, a good deal of money to own one, I want one that's going to be a nicer shape. So, you know, you heard it here first. You're like, who buys these things? It's people like me that actually want stuff like this and willing to pay full market for them because I recognize that they're rare. So there you go. That's going to go ahead and do it for this one. The video is for entertainment purposes only. Information provided is not financial advice. Please do great and collect responsibly as always. And uh, I'll see you guys later. You guys take care. If you're going to be in uh, Colorado for the a and Money Show, I will be there. Probably see you around if you're going to make the trek downwards uh, in that area. Uh, or over or upwards, depending on where, where you're located at in the country, I guess. Uh, but in June, which is only a few short months away, guys, we're going to be at another big show. We're going to be at the Northeast Oklahoma Coin Show. It's going to be at the Marriott Hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so we're going to be there as well. And uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for folks, if they want to come down and say hi, to absolutely do so. You know, we, we are going to be dropping bangers. We might even do Long Beach this fall as well. Another big show in Southern California. So uh, that's it. That's it, guys. Uh, so I will see you guys later. Have a great week. And uh, I hope to see a few of you guys at the Colorado Springs A&A show. So you guys take care and I'll see you next time.